It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Man, I'm at Impact Network, and we know Impact Network are big sponsors of the Astros. I'm sitting here, and I'm listening to the team all day yesterday, seeing what's going on. I've got these two great coaches here by me. You guys are the coaches of one of the phenomenal managed services companies in the country. And I want to sit back and talk to you a little bit because what you're doing on the field, I, I honestly believe this. You tell me if I'm wrong, coaches, but I, I think your competition, they visualize a strikeout as soon as your pitchers show up on the field. I mean, is that true? Sounds like it. It sounds like it to me. But I got to ask you, here's a question. So as I'm looking at your team, you got rookies, you got veterans. Where the hell are you getting these rookies at? And how do you get them up to speed? Because it sounds to me like when I listen to them doing their calls and their activity, they're all pretty much on a pretty solid playing field. Yeah. So let's talk to you about the rookies. Where are those rookies coming from? And how do you get them up to training? Uh, we're, we're actually really selective of the people that we bring on to mm -hmm. join this team. Culture's a big deal for us, but also um, finding people that understand that they were part of a team and, and they're very coachable. Um, they receive the, the, the coaching and, and we just keep giving it to them. Do you have like a training camp or something? Like a oh, baseball player? Actually, yes. Uh, we've got uh, ILI or Impact Learning Institute we're mm -hmm. really proud of. Uh, where Ashley Carnes and Kendra Bittner take all of our new salespeople for at least a week, mm -hmm. sometimes a little bit longer, and uh, and they turn them into a, a good foundation for us to then work on once they get back. And they do that like right when they first get hired? You try to do that within a month or something? Usually in the first couple of weeks. Well, Scott, what about the veterans? I mean, you got some veterans out there, you know how the veterans get sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, they get a little bit, you know, complacent, and I don't see that here. So how do you keep your veterans energized, and do they help how do, they, how do you support them in helping up these rookies? Well, first of all, you have to invest in everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and after we establish a foundation with each and every employee that we have, then you get on a learning track that ex extends throughout the rest of your career. We have an 18-month track for salespeople, for example. Uh, we have certification processes for all of our engineers. We take learning and development and a career path very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. Casey and Dan and Frank talk often about rapid career advancement and mm -hmm. impact and how important it is to us as a leadership group, but, but we have to be reflective in that energy and invest back in them mm -hmm. so that we're providing them the information, the tools to facilitate that growth. Well, we a lot of our friends, legacy print companies, Hell Impact was a legacy print company, you know, mm -hmm. and they've transitioned beyond anyone's wildest dreams, I believe, except for maybe Kuko's. But you know, at the end of the day, when I was in your sales training yesterday, your, your sales meeting for the Monday morning meeting, you know, y'all were talking about managed services as the product that you sell. And, when, and, and then you also talked about how the first thing you sell is really the assessment. I've been preaching this for a long damn time. I was so excited to actually sit in a room and hear people talking about that. And then talking about goals on assessments. Just walk me through that because a lot of folks don't get it. They, they get these IT deliverables and they don't, the reps don't know what the hell they're selling, but they're not selling anything until they sell the assessment. How do you reinforce that thinking? And I, I know you didn't have to get buy-in because you sent them to the camp. They learned how to, from the yeah. very beginning, but you know, how do you, what, what is the sales reps really doing when, when they sell an assessment? I mean, how, what do you, what's your goal there? Well, first of all, business leaders not buying an assessment or even a partnership, mm -hmm. they're buying an outcome. Mm -hmm. and, and when we sit down with clients, they're looking for this utopian direction in the future mm -hmm. where they have all of the direction from a technology perspective that lands them where they need to be. And what facilitates that, what bridges that gap between where they are today and where they want to be is knowledge. And so the first part of that step is, is getting a real understanding for what an environment's doing. And the word assessment's used all over the place. Mm -hmm. and it means something different to us. Mm -hmm. it, it's not given a three or four page document, or sure. thrown in an executable file and yeah. seeing what you get Or the green, green, yellow, and red light, all that crazy yeah. nonsense that you get yeah. free online. Yeah. No, uh, we, we spend an enormous amount of time mm -hmm. understanding an environment. So then when we start to develop these solutions, it's based on information where we understand what a company needs. So. Mm -hmm. It's much e easier to talk about uh, the assessment being a function of that ultimate goal rather than something that somebody's purchasing. Well, when I talk to the, to, the, to the leaders that are out there, you know, acquiring your customers, if you will, throwing their pitches, if you will, but they're, they're really understanding of the assessment. They understand the process. They understand the value of that. But it was so amazing when, when you think about that's what they're kind of, that's their goal. Their goal is to get an appointment so they can go in to assess the client in the right proper way so you can offer the right solution. Or maybe not. You might you might go through this process of evaluating the customer and find, man, they're not the right fit. 
It happens you, on occasion. Yeah, but you paid us for this. This was a deliverable. And I, and I think a lot of our friends don't look at that as a deliverable. And I wanted to look at that as a deliverable. So I got to ask you all this. What, what's your average assessment selling for these days? Oh, man. Uh, that continues to get higher and yeah. higher and higher. It's, it's five digits, and it's usually a pretty good size five yeah. digit. Um, but, but ultimately for us, we don't talk about quotas with mm -hmm. the reps on what they're selling. We, we talk about finding the right engagements. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, if, if the assessment is facilitating it, then we've got alignment for everyone. Mm -hmm. The sales rep's interested in selling the right thing. The mm -hmm. customer's interested in knowing what they're buying, and we're interested in building the right solution. Mm -hmm. So when you start focusing on that first step, and focusing on what gets us all to where we ultimately want to be, mm -hmm. it becomes a pivot point that's really powerful in not just the buying process, but in the support process as well. We can support our clients better because we know how to support mm -hmm. them and we've built our model that way. Yep, and your, your reps are excited about that because you could tell they have a lot of confidence in the team. I've got to meet some of your, your tech and technology team, smart, smart, amazing people. So when they have that confidence, they understand the roadmap, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's great stuff. You guys are doing some great stuff. You're hitting the ball out of the park all the time. So let me ask you a question here. So last year, you were kind of like the champions around here, weren't you? Agreed, for, yeah. For, so you guys, and you've been in, in Houston now how long? Uh, we just entered our third year. So third year, second year, you're winning, knocking the ball out of the park. Yeah. And by the way, when they knock it out of the park, it's not a foul ball. It's a friggin' home run, right? That's right. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I can't stress to you enough that you have to be able to put value inside these assessments that you're taking out into the marketplace. The teams behind those assessments, the reps that are out there looking for those prospects, they'll give great pitches if they have the right information. There's no doubt about that. I want to ask you a question, though, because a lot of our friends, they, uh, they struggle with compensation for these A players. Yeah. You guys have A players. I can walk around and tell that. So... Obviously, these players aren't coming to you like, you know, they're not the last pick of the draft, if you will. So does your cost for human capital, how does that affect you in the, in the marketplace being competitive? And that's a great question, but I, I think it's not focusing on compensation. Mm -hmm. It's focusing, focusing on the holistic approach for mm -hmm. our employees. It's providing everything that they need to see. When you talk about the career path that Casey mm -hmm. referenced earlier in this conversation, paying them what they should be paid, the value of the investment that they make in your organization, but facilitating a culture where they can work in a community and feel really excited about what they're accomplishing, lead together a little bit, mm -hmm. celebrate a little bit together. Sure. Um, it, it, it starts to build a community of success. Mm -hmm. People want to be a part of that. Yeah, you could sense it. I mean, you could sense it at the meeting on Monday. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the bottom line is managed services is very obtainable, but I'm going to tell you what happens. Most of you all visualize that you're gonna have a great successful managed practice, managed service practices, but you go right to the success piece and you forget to visualize the work. And I strongly suggest that you put the work, <laughs> you gotta focus on the work, reach out to these folks, they love to help our peers out. But at the end of the day, you know what? We gotta hit the ball out of the park and everybody watching me knows this, status quo is the killer of all that'll be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo and I'll see y'all later. <laughs>